Can any of you guess who this is? Take a stab at it. What do you think? See any resemblance? This is me. This is Lil Rhett from way back in the day when I was just a kid with no idea about what the future would be like. You might not have guessed that it was me because look how different I am. I'm so much younger. Even my hair was a different color. But the cool thing to think about is that even though I'm different now, I'm grown up a lot, God knew me back then. And God knows me now. In fact, I think God knows me more than me. Welcome everybody to our brand new series, Brave, where we're gonna talk about why we can be brave and what it looks like to be brave in the world that we live in. Before today's lesson, let's spend just a moment praying though. Join me. God, thank you for who you are and for the fact that you know us. Help us to be people who are brave. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for praying, everybody. If you've got a Bible, you can turn to the book of 1 Samuel. There's a 1 Samuel and a 2 Samuel. Turn to 1 Samuel in chapter 16. What do you think? 1 Samuel, is that in the New Testament or the Old Testament? Old Testament, that's right. Great job. We're going to be in 1 Samuel, and we're going to look at a story about a man named Samuel who was sent on a mission by God to find somebody, but he didn't know who that person was. But thankfully, God knew who he was looking for. And we'll think about how God knew that person, and God knows me, and God knows you. The first king of God's people, the Israelites, his name was Saul. But Saul wasn't following God the way that he was supposed to. And so God told Samuel that Saul couldn't be king anymore. Samuel was a prophet. A prophet is a person who speaks messages for God. And God told Samuel that Saul couldn't be king, but thankfully he was going to pick the new king. God would pick the king to take Saul's place. And so he gives Samuel a mission and a way to go look and find the new king. Let's see what it says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, starting at verse 1. God says, go to Bethlehem, find a man named Jesse who lives there, for I have selected one of his sons to be my king. And if we skip down to verse 6, it says, When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab. He's the oldest brother. And Samuel thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. This is the guy, right? Verse 7, But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way that you see them. People judge by the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Samuel took one look at the oldest brother, Eliab, and he thought, this guy looks like a born leader. Good choice, God. He's probably tall and handsome and strong. He'll be a great king. And God said, nope, that's not the one. As we talk about how God knows us and God sees us differently than people see us, that gives me an idea for a game. Game time! Okay, calling this one self-portrait. You're gonna wanna pause and go grab something to draw with and something to draw on and come back to meet me here. Okay, this is how the game's gonna go. We're gonna put a one minute timer up and you have one minute to draw the person that you know best, you. Calling this self-portrait because you're gonna do your best to draw yourself as much as you can to make it lifelike and real, just like you look today. You know you, right? You've looked in the mirror before. Go take a look in the mirror really quick if you have to and then come back know what you look like, get that picture in your brain, and we'll see between you and me who can make their self-portrait the most realistic. You guys ready? On your mark, get set, draw.
I know that you know you better than I do, but let's remember that, thankfully, God knows us not just based off what we look like, but he knows our hearts. He knows who we are. So it's time for the big reveal. Let's see whose self-portrait is the most realistic. Eh? Eh? What do you think? You be the judge. I can't see yours, so post a picture of it to our Facebook group if you want me to see your own self-portrait. And then let me know if you think you beat me or not. I thought it was pretty good. All right, back to our story in 1 Samuel. So Jesse, the father, has shown Samuel all seven of his oldest sons. And just like Eliab, with each son that Samuel sees, he thinks, yeah, he looks pretty good, but God tells him, nope, that's not the guy I'm looking for. And so this is what it says in verse 11. Then Samuel asked, are these all the sons you have? And Jesse replying says, they're still the youngest, but he's out in the fields watching the sheep and goats. Send for him at once, Samuel said. So they bring the youngest son. Verse 12. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one. I anoint him. So as David, we find out that this guy is David. He'll be King David that we read about a lot in the Bible. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil, and the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. It was tempting for Samuel to look at the outward appearance, what, what each of Jesse's sons looked like and how big and strong they were or how tough they looked, thinking that that would make a good king. But God makes it clear that what's most important to him isn't just the outside, what we look like, but it's about what's on the inside, what's in our hearts. And so he was able to choose David to be the new king of Israel because he knew, as it would be said later in the Bible, that David would be a man after his own heart. David wanted to love God and live for God. God chose David to be the new king of Israel, but God is also choosing you to be someone as well. And he's gonna choose things for you to do but thankfully, because you know that God knows you, you know that he chose the right person for the job. So be brave in whatever it is God is calling you to do because he wouldn't have picked you if you weren't you. All right, everybody, that's it for this week. I hope you're all doing well. I love you. Have a good one. See you next time. Hello, everybody. We are so glad that we can worship with you this morning. And so I got my girls here and we're going to sing a song for you. And the first song we're going to sing is called The Lion and the Lamb. So if you know it, sing along and dance with us as we sing The Lion and the Lamb. You girls ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go.
out in a cool day. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that He is Lord. So let's sing out. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Oh, who can stop the Lord everybody. Hello everybody. Our next song is going to be Jesus Loves Me. One, two, three. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. 